and then I gotta find myself on the channel. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome back to uh, Gray Skeptic. We're having another atheist flashbacks, and we're also having technical difficulties. Uh, so give us just a minute here while we um, find the link. And have you tried turning it off and on? Yeah, yeah, I've tried just about everything. <laughs> um, here it is. So I'm going to share that right here in the chat with you. Perfect. Did you get that? Yes. Okay. Cool. Perfect. I will tweet it out so we have more people sliding in. Um, perfect. Ooh, I will tweet right. it out so we have more people. Thank, thank you very, very much. And I'm going to share okay. it here in the chat. Sorry, guys. It won't be long. Yeah, we'll start here in just a minute. Done. Okay, and I'm also going to tweet it out. Uh, I'll just attach it to what I've already. Look at that. Look at us being so efficient. <laughs> We're all on top of it. to the Christy Santiago because she shares everything for me. She's fantastic. I know she's in the chat right now. Thank you, Christy. And then you. Oops. Enter doesn't work. <laughs> so, and All right, so hopefully, hopefully that, that gets work. out there. Yeah. And here, one more. So sorry, everyone. I hate, I hate setting up a live because who doesn't? Does Look. everybody know about the drinks? Because I was going to introduce my drinks. Oh yeah, please do. Um, okay, most so. Of them do. Okay, so I don't know what is happening, but I was told to have some drinks with me. And it's 11 a.m. It's 11.30 a.m. So I have rum. And then I oh, I have, what is this? Uh, it is scotch. Lovely. And then I also got juice. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> Depending on how we go, you know. Yes. I have my... Uh, my skeptic glass here, uh, full of uh, am amaretto. I need, I need to, I need to print, um, you know, um, a T-shirt um, oh, yeah. for my conferences. So I'm doing a faithless hijabi T-shirt. Well, this is a one-off T-shirt just for me, and mm -hmm. if people like it, um, I'm happy to share the designs or whatever they would want, or just get them in order. Um, the more people wearing it, the more where it gets out there but it's i'm still working on the design and the text so it'll be nice it'll be interesting yeah that would be really really cool i'd even be interested in getting one of those that'd be awesome yeah it was um, actually a, it's actually a crop top but oh okay <laughs> that's all right i'll rock that that's no, fine I'll try to rock that. that's fine i'll try getting a slice for you <laughs> that's fantastic um no actually i probably would still buy it that'd be amazing um, um, okay, so um, atheist flashback. Um, Zara, right? It's not Zara. 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 Okay. We haven't even really had time to like introduce. I each know. Other. Um, I know. It's been crazy. It has. Um, so, Zara. So you know, because uh, we haven't really gotten a chance to talk. We only talked a little bit over, over Messenger. Um, this is atheist flashback. So I am going to interview you as a Muslim, not an ex-Muslim anymore. Ooh. Oh, yeah, so that's when you need to drink. <laughs> okay. <that makes. coughs> um, so, yeah. Um, so, if any questions are difficult to ask or, like, we, we see you kind of, like, just... joke up, like, oh, oh, shoot. Yeah, you can time out and take a drink. Just, or, or, or if you're just, like, fuck. <laughs> so if, if you kind of break character, more or less, yeah. you, you take a drink. And it's okay, not just how... because, like, we're keeping score. It's just because we keep it fun that way. Okay. Okay. There's no competition. All right, that's great. No, no, there's no com competition. I mean, may okay. maybe at some point I'll go back and watch all of them, mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll count how many times. <laughs> <people are freaking laughs> out. 
I wonder uh, what the um, winner gets. <laughs> yeah, I have, to, I have to figure that out. I think that's a good idea. Um, so let me make sure I am in the right one here. Oh, I'm not. I'm like completely ignoring the chat. Oh, Hello, yeah. chat. Thank you, <laughs> everyone. You guys know I'm not the best at chat. I might be better than Shannon Q at watching the live chat, but I also might not be. So, um, me. I can watch over the chat. Okay. You, you can actually multitask. When the host uh, <laughs> I was going to say I'm a woman, but I've had um, oh. <laughs> men do it better than me. <laughs> gotcha. Well, I am garbage at it. But um, thank you, everyone. Um, also, uh, Mrs. Snarky, thank you for saying nice haircut. But, um, thank you. It was to me. Uh, oh, but oh. probably. Because I don't think uh, I nice nice. haircut, Mac. <laughs> Thanks. I actually got quite a bit taken off. I got like three or four inches off. Um, but <laughs> your hair is wonderful tonight. Um, <laughs> Thank you. You're so kind. I haven't combed them. I go brush them. <laughs> you know, <laughs> as you do. So, um, before we start, I do want to give you a moment here to tell us about you. Um, tell us about what you do. Um, as an ex-Muslim, as yourself, um, yeah, uh, just introduce yourself. Uh, tell us about um, yeah. uh, Atlas Hijabi, and if you're doing anything with your channel, I don't think you are yet. But not, not yet, not yet. I have had no time. Um, I'll tell you. Okay, perfect. I'll give you a list of what I've been up to, and you know, if I can barely, like, you know, if I can get four hours of sleep in a day, that would be amazing. But at the moment, that's so difficult. <laughs> um, OK, so my name is Zara K. Um, I have been a very recent atheist. I started in July. Uh, well, atheist, public, public atheist. Um, okay. I was kind of really scared to come out before, but we can talk about it as we move further along. Um, I'm from Tanzania. I was born in Tanzania. Um, I moved out of Tanzania when I was 16. Um, no, it had nothing to do with religion. It had a lot to do with where I saw my career moving towards. Um, I moved to Malaysia, and then I just and then I realized that wasn't a great idea. So three years later, I moved to Australia, and I've been in Australia for the past seven years. Um, I was born as a Muslim. I was raised as a Muslim in the Shia sect um, in Tanzania. My parents are quite conservative, um, and very much so practicing Muslims. Um, and when I when I came out as an atheist or an, as an ex-Muslim, I realized that there was a gap in the ex-Muslim world where nobody had this one-on-one -on -one conversation with women who were actually going through so much trauma coming out. And you know, when when you're out and you want to connect to people, you start finding, you start talking to people who have the same interests as you. And for me, it was the whole sexism, misogyny, hijab before I even got into the philosophical reasons of it. So I started talking to women, um, just trying to find that comfort. And I realized what's missing is nobody's really addressing ex-Muslim women. Sure, there are bigger groups. Sure, people talk about it. But there, haven't, there hasn't actually been a specific um, group or website or a, a forum or a platform to share stories. And that's when I decided to open Faithless Ujabi. It was, it was a friend of mine who suggested something completely different. Um, and it turned out to be complete. Initially, we wanted to convert curious Muslims to ex-Muslim, and then we decided why, like, you know, they'll find us, the truth will be out there, we're going to talk about the truth, but what's more important is the conversation that we're not having between Muslims and ex-Muslims, especially women, uh, those who think Islam is a feminist religion or that hijab empowers them, versus those who have been in that realm and have come out and don't, or ha had never seen it that way, or don't know, don't any um, anymore see it that way, um, and they weren't addressed. Where are you? Okay, I can't hear you, but you're in your mobile. Okay, you're here. Okay, perfect. Um, anyway, um, so yeah, and that's when I opened Faithless Hijabi, and then from starting, it started off as a platform where people can share stories or where women can share stories receive that empathy and sympathy from people and put their word out there their experiences out there to now i'm working or trying to really work on asylum cases i still have 
a long time to go because it is not a paying job for me at all. I am currently between jobs and that's why it's really hectic for me to do conferences, um, face the Sajabi, asylum cases, look for jobs and do a geographical location move. And that's not just from one city to another, but from Australia to somewhere in the UK. And it's all happening in four weeks. So clearly sleep is, sleep is a commodity. You're still on mute. I am. I'm sorry. That's <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I do that so I don't distract you at all. <laughs> and then I forget oh, to okay. unmute myself. That's um, it. I like I like talking about things, so I can talk even if you're distracting. I will look around though. <laughs> That's fair. I'm looking at your book collection right now and your toys. Oh yes. Yeah, adult I do have toys. Some toys up there. Yeah. Adult well, toys. Actually, a lot of those are like um, some like childhood toys. Like oh okay. Or whatever. Are you but, yeah. Are your kids allowed to touch them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. Yep. Yeah, I share. I can share. I mean, mm -hmm. I tell them to share. I should. <laughs> yeah, I want your toys, but too. it's yours. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes I don't let my one-year-old touch them as much because he'll like break <laughs> anything. But. Yeah. But anyways, uh, I... um, yeah. Um, faceless hijabi. You said you opened that up around July. Uh, so the talk started in July when I was coming out, like, you know, when I had come out as an atheist or when I was thinking of like connecting with other women. Um, but then I officially opened it in mid October and it skyrocketed over November and December. Um, that was even before the Saudi, um, girl, the Hafs case. So it skyrocketed way before then. Um, that's what I realized, like any business person or an entrepreneur, that there is a market for this. There are people looking for their service. How can we further look into expanding that? And how can we further look into getting the best out of people who are contributing the audiences and potential audiences? Gotcha. And is it just a Facebook page right now, or is it more? Because I've only found the it's, Facebook page. It's it's Facebook page and Instagram, but Instagram pretty much is publishes the stories over Facebook and then I have other channels on Twitter um, email and reddit to get all the stories in um, and then I just introduced a new member to the group to help me publish and edit the stories because I've had no time to do it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you'll see me complaining about time a lot I wish we had more than 24 hours in the day yeah I understand that <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I I too overbook myself yeah. Um, as a lot of my my viewers know, that's why I don't upload as much as I should. Sorry, guys. Um, but yeah, okay. Um, uh, Purple Rams with Orange has a question, but I think we're about to get into that anyway. So, are you ready to start the actual interview? I am ready to start. Shoot. Okay, we'll start with the drink. So, cheers. <laughs> I haven't poured a drink oh, okay. yet. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll I'm wait. just gonna do it with an empty glass. I don't know if I want to <laughs> drink alcohol at 11 a.m. <laughs> That's right. That I, have, nice? I, have a, I have a packed day, so I don't know if I want to be. Well, you can take as little of sips as you want or not any sips at all. That's fine. I know, <laughs> I know it's early. pressure. I'm, I'm not sure my parents would approve of this. <laughs> <laughs> they probably wouldn't. <laughs> all in all. So. Ooh, that just spilled on me, but, you know, I've got okay. it. That's a good part. tissues because, yeah. But yeah, let's start. Okay, fantastic. All right, so Zara, you are a Muslim again. So, all right, know. drink. <laughs> Here's gonna. You're drinking for me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, first question I always like to ask is, do you drink? Uh no, no. Yep. Neither have any of my family members i don't know any of my cousins maybe some of them do i don't know this but my close family members very religious do not drink um i would not i'm not allowed to even go into a place that serves alcohol because any money that you pay for food can be used in alcohol and that way your money is aiding towards alcohol and no that's a no-no gotcha now that's just restaurants right not like also grocery stores or do a lot of grocery stores just not sell so grocery stores it's grocery stores and alcohol oh, sorry grocery stores in tanzania do not sell alcohol unless you're an international store but even then it is fine to go to grocery stores 
um, like the, the South African imported ones or the expensive ones that rich people go to. Um, so that is, that is fine to do. Um, but yeah, there weren't restrictions on it. However, sometimes me and my sister, like it wasn't rebellion. It was just, they have good food and it's halal food and we're not paying for alcohol. So there's no, you know, we try, there's no rationale behind not going to it. That makes sense. Okay, so um, first thing for everyone to know is you shouldn't drink if you're a Muslim. So if you want to drink, um, Islam might not be for you. Um, well, 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 I am well, going to rebut it and say there have been so many Muslims who have harassed me and said, um, you were never a real Muslim and um, drink. So. <laughs> I wasn't a real Muslim because I pray and I didn't drink and I definitely did not engage in any sexual activity until I came out. Um, but no, I wasn't a real Muslim. And I, I covered myself too for a really? long, until I was 19, yeah. But well, you know, I'll let you ask that. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so the next thing I need to ask, and I'm very curious, um, were you, um, uh, get the words right. Sunni, Shia, um, Shia. Is, uh, Shia, Shia. Okay. And then, um, purple rhymes with orange, which is a question in the chat was, what is the difference between the sex? Now there's at least three, right? Um, so I'll start by, I'll give you a brief history one on one as far as I can remember, because a lot of times you're not even taught this. It was only later on when I became an ex Muslim is when I dug into it. Hmm. Um, it started off with the caliphate. Um, when Muhammad died, there was obviously a political power play into who should be the caliphate. Should it be Ali, the son in law and the cousin of the prophet who, who, who apparently he had announced to be, um, the the one who would be the caliphate after or should it be the companions who have been with Muhammad longer and know him longer and know the rules for a longer time and have been with him the longest and um that's how it all started diverging and the sunni and shia titles came in way after so previously they would only consider themselves muslims but you know um the, but like different kinds of muslims muslims who believed in one another the differences that we have is the way we pray there, we have a concept of temporary marriage, um, which is very similar to um, a permanent marriage, the nikah, but she has called it muta, where you can be temporary married. Well, you can be married to somebody in a for a specific time. Hmm. And then after that time has passed, your marriage is over and you can renew it like a contract. Um, definitely has and can be used in for prostitution um it's legalizing prostitution and it goes the same way the the rules for men and women apply in temporary marriage and permanent marriage the same way so if a woman is temporary married to a man she can't temporary marry to another man at the same time okay. um and if the and if um the woman is obviously married to somebody she can't temporary like you know she can't be in a temporary marriage with somebody else so men can have all um, and I'm and I'm and I think yeah, and I think the four wives rule still applies. So only four people. Okay. Uh, that, so sorry, is that widely practiced temporarily? Um, in my community, when people would get engaged, yes, because you're not allowed to hold hands if they're not if you're not married mm -hmm. or even talk to each other. So my siblings who got married, just even to talk over the phone, they got engaged. Uh, sorry, they they got temporary married after they were engaged. You're not allowed to talk. You're not allowed to talk in a non-professional, romantic way or anything in a friendly way to somebody who's not a mahram, um, um, a husband or a brother or a father or an uncle okay. or a son. Um, so yeah, my it, in my community, it it, it is it was. Um, I've been a bit I've been away from it for ten years, but. Um, yeah, I think it is in Iran as well, which is the hub of the Shias. Um, and the other differences are pretty much around how do you commemorate the first month of the first year calendar, first calendar, but first month of the Islamic calendar year, which is Muharram. Gotcha. And then how do you, 
how do so you she is she has go all out there they have uh melancholy like songs playing and they're all sad and they beat their chests and they cut themselves in to feel that pain that the grandson of the prophet so this was this was the battle that took place 1400 years ago with the grandson of the prophet fighting over um why you shouldn't pay allegiance to somebody who did not consider themselves a muslim but was still the leader of the time um and he took all his family there and they got killed and it's a sad story but also i find it very interesting that it has taken so much effect in this day and age that people literally like people literally would take a sword and cut their child's head for their child to be like sad about it and if you google pictures yes it happens on extreme basis it doesn't happen everywhere but i've seen it live i've seen it in iraq syria iran i haven't been to pakistan but i know i've seen photos of pakistanis doing it um i've seen young kids at the like you know by the age of you know seven or eight like cutting themselves with like blades or something so google what uh, google how ashura is um commemorated or celebrated within the shias it is interesting and definitely a longer story yeah, that's yeah, that's really interesting. Um, uh, a question on that is like, does anyone show you how to cut yourself so you don't bleed out? Like, is do you just pick any spot or like is that talked about? So it's usually the men that do it. Okay. Um, I wasn't given a briefing one on one on it, but I think they have special um, blades that are not sharp enough, and I I don't know what the tool is called. It has like it's a stick, but then it has many blades coming out and like chains and stuff so i don't know what it's called but i think that kind of helps yeah um, very very interesting that's something i have not heard of yeah um it is it is scary it was something my family was very much against so my family never did it um my family was well conservative um uh, as much as we'd like to have a conversation sometimes it, it we actually did as much as we didn't like to have a conversation we actually did talk about things like this on what sounded very delusional and crazy and like we're not doing this but we will still beat our chest because that's okay so beating your chest is similar but it's not as extreme but it's also to be sad about the whole thing gotcha so they beat like real hard then you can beat real hard you can beat it lightly the idea is uh just because it symbolizes it okay very good answer, and thank, thank you for going into such detail. Uh, no worries. About that. No worries. <coughs> Sorry, I, I'm getting over cold, so I'm trying to. It's like okay, I make people nervous. That's fine. <laughs> uh -huh. now, I'm just, now I'm just thirsty, so I'm gonna have a drink. Fair enough. Okay, so the next question I have um, now, so you know, because um, I know you haven't really checked out my whole atheist flashback series yet. You were the first person to come on here to do an atheist flashback who's not Christian or who wasn't Christian. Yes. There so we go. You are oh, opening the door. Muslims and Muslims. Yes. Yes. And I'm very excited. Um, and this, and this, like each each sect of Christianity has been an experience for me because, like, I was only one kind of Christian, right? Mm -hmm. So um, it's a learning experience always but this yeah. is a whole new world for me um and i haven't yeah. read the quran yet I, I want to i haven't even finished the bible i've read most of it i just have i was just gonna say if you read the quran and finish it you'll be first i i stopped reading it as a child and then now i only read it as references mm. when i'm trying to understand something because well one i don't see the point of reading the whole thing when all it talks about is things that i will never value uh it's like reading a horrible book just for the sake of it um However, if there's some valuable insights that I can get from it, the good, the bad, and the evil, um, I do refer to it as references. But I haven't finished the whole thing as per se. And even then, I read it in Arabic, so I had no idea what I was reading. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. And that's the way you're supposed to read it, right? Well, that's the way you're supposed to read it. And I'm not an Arabic speaker. Like I was sent to Saturday school for 12 years to learn Arabic, to learn the Quran, to learn Islamic history. Um, but I, I only picked up a few words. I only know a few words and I can understand when people speak Arabic, but not at the Quranic level and not enough to understand a complete verse. Maybe I can pick up a few, like a few words from it. 
Hmm. But, yeah. So <clears throat> actually that, um, I'm not gonna ask my next question. I'm gonna ask this one instead. What is Saturday school uh, specifically? Cause, cause we have Sunday school. That's just same like, thing. Same, same thing. Okay, that's right. Same thing. So it's studying, it's, um, it's studying more of your Islamic background. Gotcha. Um, all right, so then the next um, other first question um, is, can you tell me from the Quran or from just the Islamic or Shia um, view, mm -hmm. how did the world start? Because we have Adam and Eve and all that jazz. Pretty much the same. Okay. Pretty much um, the same. Eve, Apple stuff. Um, we call them Adam and Hawa. Um, Hawa. Hawa. H-A-W-A. Okay. Um, so baby Hawa. Um, so same thing. Forbidden fruit, jealous, jealous brothers. Um, that was that. That is pretty much the same. So I think up until Islam was actually Islam actually did come into effect. It. I think the stories are pretty much the same. Okay. Except you know, there's no, there's no Jesus. He's a prophet. I mean, he right. exists. He's a prophet, but he's not God, and he's just one of the other. One million, a hundred, not hundred thousand something prophets, um, and that's and that's his place. So it's not God. Uh, well, wait, so so he's not even special? Um, no, he's not. N not really. No. Well, apart from the whole virgin birth, which was you know a thing. Mm -hmm. Um, no, he's not special. Sorry. So, do you believe that he was born of a virgin, or is that kind of shaky? What's your thought? No, he was born. He was definitely not well. He was definitely born through a virgin, like, from a virgin, no. from a virgin. Um, but obviously, that did not make any sense to me, even as a child. And I'm like, but there is no dad. Obviously, you know, I was like, I didn't like IVF did not exist then. I think so. I think so. <laughs> I'm not sure, but you know, I was just like, you know, what is happening? Um, but um, yeah, no, he was just a prophet. Okay. He was just a prophet. Uh, he's not God. He's not son of God. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much how I was taught. And you need to respect other people's gods. They're not right, though. They're not mm -hmm. right. You can respect a religion, but they're all going to go to hell. And you shouldn't have Christian friends um, or non Muslim friends. Uh, because they're going to, I, I don't remember who or who said that. Was it my parents, school teachers, or how it was communicated to me? But I always, like, you know, there's, there's, I, I, as a child, you don't just come up with these things unless you've read them somewhere. But I was always skeptical of hanging around too many people who weren't Muslims, or even hanging around people who are from Sunni sex. Half of my friends were Sunnis, but even like just being close to them, or like um, most of my friends who were like my best friends, we came from the same community, we came from the same, um, we went to the same school and somehow inst instinctively we were just closer than people who weren't from the same community. Maybe because our families allowed us to be or maybe because we had seen each other at the mosque or maybe because we also hung out inside on Saturday school or maybe because our parents really just wanted us to stay within that some group of people or the same idea of Islam. Gotcha. So, so, so it's really like just the norm. It's mm -hmm. it's, it's almost unspoken. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, so, how much do you know of the Christian Bible? Enough to know that it's very similar um, to the. I haven't actually read it. I remember having it in the hotel room, and I was like, "So, does that mean they want me to be Christian, or are they only expecting Christian? Why don't they ever have Quran here?" Right, um, that's a good question. It's like, it, like, why do they ever have it? Like, why, like, obviously you're, you're scared, I would think so, that people would abuse it um, because there have been incidents. But, you know, I mean, the connotation that people would abuse the Bible is less hyped up than those who would abuse the Quran. Right. It's, it's always surprising to me. It's always, it's always surprising to me. You go to motels and stuff, and I don't know where. I was in a hotel in Kenya, or and they had a Bible. And I'm like, that's fine. I'm not offended, but 
why is there no Quran? And now right. that I think about it, surely if they put Quran in hotels, they would, you know, if there were people who were bold enough, they would just um, not respect it as much. I keep it light. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, and I think I think Christians really, really, like they work on proselytizing. They really, really push it very hard. Um, but so do Muslims. No, no, no. So do Muslims. Right. So I would say Muslims are better at this, and they have tactics, man. They're they're smart. They advertise it. Like if you look at it now, if a person's an athlete and wears a hijab, oh look at a look at a hijabi athlete, and I'm like, w woman, right? And I'm like, why can't you just call her a woman who's an athlete? Why does the hijab have anything to do with it? I'm like, sure, she has the freedom and the liberation to wear it. Would you say the same thing with uh, for a person who is still a Muslim, still a woman, does not wear a hijab, and she's an athlete? Not many people do that. It's not as hyped up. Why? Like. There's so many questions that I'm like, what are you guys trying to prove? Or like things like the dawah tables. So the dawah tables are in, like dawah is basically inviting people to the religion. So we have dawah tables where they educate people on Islam and how it's the right religion and the only religion and um, whatnot. Um, and then there's uh, the charity houses uh, or no, the donations and the charity that my dad does. And that's amazing. Um, and I remember, oh, he just reminded me of one of this beautiful and fulfilling memory. But now when I look, look at it, I'm like, there was something wrong with it. Every Ramadan, so Ramadan is the fasting. I think it's, the, it's one of the months. I don't remember. I think it's the ninth. Um, it's the month of fasting. Um, and every ramadan or even other days my dad my dad is an amazing person so he will cook he's a chef um mm. he will cook for a whole bunch and then we'll go to the blind school and um we will you know we will serve them and it was amazing i love that part of it I, it had nothing to do with religion but there was some component of it where we would serve uh it was it was an it was a blind orphanage right or sometimes their families were there, but it was it's it's not as like you know there there are not many blind schools. So we'd go to the blind school, or sometimes we'd go to the deaf and dumb school, um, and then we would serve it, and it was amazing. And then there were people who were Muslims, and then there were people who were Christians. But obviously, while they weren't fasting, they were still invited to it, and that was amazing. Um, but I'm just thinking how these little things, you know, that Muslims do in the month of Ramadan or in other things to kind of pull people towards Islam. So just a, just the very little things, the basic things that are amazing that every person should be doing anyway, but they always have this hidden agenda subconsciously at the very least um, to represent Islam. I, I, I think a lot of times I've had this debate with my family saying, why are you donating to other Muslim countries when you can donate in Tanzania? And they're like, we do it in Tanzania as well. And I'm like, but if you're, if half of your money or a portion of it is going to Iraq and Iran where, yes, people are dying, there are people dying in Africa at a higher rate through things that you can actually help change versus terrorism or politics. And they just don't know what to reply to that. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Um, well, Sorry, I, uh, I, I yeah, told you okay. I couldn't have. No, 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 it's fine. It's great. It's just there's so much to process because I'm not, I'm not used to it. Um, <laughs> um, so one of the questions I wanted to ask you, because um, I, I, I know the Quran's um, laid out differently mm -hmm. than the Bible. Um, is it? Is it in different books or is it just like one, one solid? Book. Okay, one so book, different chapters. Chapters. Do you it's have a solid. chapter that um, speaks to you more? Is like, do you have like a favorite chapter of? Um, I think Surah and Nisa, that's uh, Nisa is woman. So the chapter of the woman, I think, has uh, stuff on wife beating. It has stuff on the role of women and sure there's some good parts to it i have not read the whole thing in detail but the negative part like the the not so great parts are ones that really frustrate me hmm. and ones that yes i relate to a lot not because of the way i was raised but because 
I was raised so like no, I I have become this person who is quite um, has moved in the opposite direction. Like I don't believe in gender defined roles. Um, I don't see that they're masculine or feminine attributes. I think they're just attributes. And you know, the more there's there's so much subjugation that happens in Islam and Surah Nisa enforces and not enforces or speaks about some of it. Um, that I've turned out to be the complete opposite. So that's why when I read it, it's um, something that really affects me. Um, especially like things like the wife beating and then not equal inheritance. I'm not sure that's Surah I think that is Surah Bakara. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, I think that's mentioned in there. Is it yeah. like you get half the inheritance or something? Yes, so it is mentioned. I just don't remember what chapter. So basically women get half an inheritance than men mm -hmm. because men are the providers. Um, and, and this is in different words. I can read it out to you if you like. Um, and um, that's and the rationale behind it is because men are the head of the house, their money will eventually just go to their wives anyway. So why give women more? Mm, okay, I see. So that's the and and then there's and then there are verses like a woman's testimony is worth of worth half of a man, and the rationale behind and that's in court. Um, and a lot of women have defended that that saying because we are women and we menstruate, we're emotional, we're deficient in our in our memory or um, our intellect. That's why men have more. And I'm like, look, that is so disappointing for me to hear from another woman. Um, you know, to say that yes, I'm ready, I'm okay being half of a man, even if um, uh, not only because God said that. You know, I'm happy for you to reject it and go like, that is not me, even if it says it. But to conform to it and to excuse it is just a concept I've never understood. It's, it's, it's really crazy. And I've even had women, um, I've even had women when I initially came out before Faithless Jabi, when I was just a keyboard warrior, uh, defend marital rape. They're like, why would you get married if it wasn't for sex? And I'm like, Okay, like I have so much to say for that. Like, <laughs> but you know that that was the rationale behind marital rape and why that isn't a thing because your husband has all rights over you and it is haram for you to um, say no to your husband to have sex unless you're on your period. Gotcha. Now, um, um, I've I have heard of, uh, if I can say it, I stutter anyways, haram. Um, can you explain that to me a little bit? What is haram? So haram is prohibited. So basically, you're not. It's a no no. Okay. It's sinful. Oh well, it, it it's 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 it can. I wouldn't say it's sinful, but it is not allowed. So if you do it, it is sinful. Okay. And I think there's a question. What does menstruation have to do with memory? Um, so as far as I understand from what I have been told and this is not even by my parents because I didn't even know about it I was raised my, I was my dad raised me saying what a man can do a woman can do better so I, I never like you know despite the whole security thing because I lived in not a safe place in the world like Tanzania is not the safest place it's not the most dangerous one but you know coming home early um, clothes and stuff were still different um, but my brother was a family person, so he would come home at seven o'clock. Well, if I was out with my friends, I'd come back home at nine or ten. So um, that was so. There was never that difference that I had felt growing up. But from what I've heard and from what I've researched, um, the way they rationalize it is women have PMS and are quite emotional during their menstruation. Um, and that then that then leads to them not making the most um, strategic or the most uh, th that then leads them to not making the right decisions, or um, and then there was some science behind women not having um, women being deficient in their like women not being as um, uh, what is that word? English. Uh, not being able to remember as much as men. And I don't know how to put it in different words. But those that was the rationale behind 
accepting the subjugation. Gotcha. Oh, I'm going to drink to that real quick. I'm, I'm thirsty, so. Fair. Gotcha. And now, um, so you said that, um, because you've never been married, right? No. No. And and you said that you, um, whenever sexually active while you mm -hmm. were. A, a a Muslim. Well, until my later stages, when I had to start kind of putting things into place, and I was like, it is so natural for uh, people to be attracted to others. Obviously, at that time, I was not exposed to homosexuality. Um, it like was it wasn't even on your radar, or I didn't even know much about it, to be honest. Um, because I left Tanzania when I was 16 and it's illegal in Tanzania to be gay. And that these are rules that came out now, but they were there before. But I was, my parents never exposed me to it. I, they, a lot of my cousins think it's because, it's because of the TV that people become gay. And I, I was never really a big fan of TV or watching anything, to be honest. I was a book nerd um, and not, not as much into pop culture until like, well, never, but like, you know, until I went overseas and I was exposed to the wider audience. And that's when I'm like, oh, so you're, you're gay. And I was like, I have no problem with that. But somehow my religion tells me to have a problem with that. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, yeah, I didn't, you know, I had to put things into like into like um, a pros and cons list. And I'm like, so it is so natural to be attracted to somebody and want to have sex. Then why has God said no to it? Why do I have to get married? What if he's the wrong person? Like, am I not wasting my life? And then like, what if I'm not ready to get married and like fulfill my womanhood duties, but I still want to engage in it. And then, you know, I was, I started questioning religion when I was, when I was very young, it started from God and um, why the Sunni and the Shias existed, why the sects existed and, why there was so much, why was I forced to pray? I hated it, I hated it so much. Um, there was no way anybody could sell me anything about prayers for me to pray five times a day. What, why except did for the you fear of hell. I'm sorry? Uh, ex except for the fear of hell. Um, yeah. Why did I hate it? Because of the fear of hell. Because um, a lot of the prayers were all about praising the prophet and the God. And I'm like, but he's only human. There's there's something wrong with this. And I don't want to wake up at 5 a.m. and pray. And I don't want to spend five more minutes of five, five minutes of my afternoon or 10 minutes of my afternoon praying when I could be sitting and not doing anything. And like, you know, it was, it's, it's like going to the gym. I always have excuses for not going to the gym. So <laughs> nobody, nobody's forcing me to do that. Um, but apparently there was so much fear instilled in people that missing a prayer is like the worst sin ever or there are other sins related they would just you know it's it's more than adultery and just so many things about missing a prayer or reciting your prayer lates or you know things that would happen to you if you miss a prayer or the person who never finished his prayers or prayed late for that one day in that life there was so much fear instilled that i was scared and i had to pray and i didn't like that feeling i do not like being told what to do um I would rather come to a conclusion myself and go like, ah, oh, this is what I need to do than somebody just telling me what to do. So there was so much fear instilled in all of us. And I'm sure people had different experiences, but mine was, and this was not like, you know, this was somewhat from my family, um, my parents, but most of it was from the Saturday school and the mosques and the lectures. So as she as you go to the mosque quite a bit because there's so many lectures i don't know if the sunnis did the same thing but we would we, every birthday or every death day or every prayer time or anything um women were allowed to go to the mosque so it wasn't one of those situations where, where women aren't obviously the men have their own mosque the so women have a, their own part of the mosque but um you know all those lectures it was always instilling fear and reward based on praising the Lord and it had nothing to do with being good human beings without all of that. It had no, it, it, it had nothing to do. You sh it had, I, I don't remember a lot of times when somebody had said you should not steal because it's not right because it hurts the other people, but it was always like, you should not steal because you're going to go to hell. So, you know, I feel like morality was, has been preached in a lot of religions in such a wrong way yeah. that people now think that morality is so 
morality is mor moral values can only come from religion because if you don't fear it how can you ever do if you, how can you ever not do it and it's such a wrong way to raise your children or to even think about things are you actually really a moral person if the reason you're not raping or stealing someone uh, stealing from someone is because you fear hell right, right. i mean there was when i when i when i um I remember committing sins like not praying or um, gossiping was a sin as well. And I was like, and, and I'm not a big gossiper, but when I did it, I would feel so guilty. And I'm like, okay, cool. Well, there was a part of me that said, am I really going to go to heaven or hell? Like, am I, am I really going to go to heaven um, because I've committed so many sins? Um, should I continue committing all the sins? um because i've committed so many so it was never about me like you know it was never about me being a good person it was always that fear of hell and heaven that was uh that pushed me away from religion even more um and that's why i was that i think that's why i started digging into the more philosophical ideas of it after i you know um was pushed away by the anti-woman and the anti-gay um, concepts in Islam. Gotcha. What was, so, what was your question? My <laughs> <laughs> what was your question? A string to that. Um, <laughs> no, the question was. You can't what, remember. What is <laughs> Oh, what is Haram? Okay, okay. Well, I kind of answered it in the whole hell and heaven thing. Okay. You did. Yeah. Um, and my next question goes along with that um, mm -hmm. and I forgot what it was but it still goes along with it is can you describe to me what hell is hell okay so the way I saw heaven and hell and uh, is everybody is going to go to heaven eventually hell is a period that can be shortened that can be short or long depending on how many sins you commit mm. right so um, if you commit less sins, you will go to heaven sooner. And if you commit more sins, you'll go to heaven later on. So hell for me was me imagining, and I was told this, that if I show my hair, I will be hung by each strand of my hair, upside down or something. Um, I, well, I don't know. I, I couldn't imagine about it. But like it was, you know, it was like showing it to somebody who's now my home, which is all of you men out there right now. Um, I actually have straight hair, but like, you know, I haven't been bothered to convert, so I'm just saying I have good hair, and um, anyway, um, okay. so, <laughs> so anyway, so there were things like the punishments in hell, um, I, or like, you know, um, having your tongue cut off, or gossiping, for backbiting, or for speaking lies and you know there were there were multiple punishments which I have now erased from my memory because it was just horrific for me to think about um, and you know somebody said if you're backbiting it's like you're eating your brother's flesh if any Muslim has heard this please plus one it because I want to know if it was just me um, obviously some of these were just tactics just to scare people right um, they were just um, things parents parents or people would use to put you know to help people stay in in line um but they were they were enough for a lot of people and i'm sure we've all been exposed to different kind of fear tactics for us to you know for us to accept it mm -hmm. so these were mine uh the punishments in hell um um yep yeah. so that's what i see hell to be a place of fire but you know, maybe there's like, I, like in my head, I imagine um, hell to be, uh, I can't even think of a movie right now, but to be like a rocky cliff place with fire underneath instead of the water. And before you're dipped back in the fire, you have so many punishments that goes on depending on what you did. And then you're like, okay, cool. You're, you're, you know, your hair have been pulled for 6,000 years. You can go in the fire for 3,000 years while we wait for the next punishment. Oh, okay. before 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 million a million years before you go to heaven. So, oh, okay. So that, that's how that's I saw it. That's, that's, how, that's how I saw it. Obviously, yeah. people have different interpretations of hell. Sometimes hell could be. I've been watching this TV show, The Good Place. If you haven't watched it, I've heard of it. 
it's it's really interesting it's really interesting my friends recommended it to me but it's really interesting where the concept of hell isn't like fire and stuff um it was mental torture and emotional torture mm. and that is that is that is a really interesting um approach to hell to be honest so i think it is yes yeah. um so more in hell um is mm -hmm. anyone in charge of it and who is it uh from what i've been told the devil so satan shaitan in arabic um who used to be god's son and then you know didn't bow down to adam and then was you know then became like the bad person and didn't bow down to adam yeah to the creation to the to, to the human creation well all angels did Okay. So that's why human beings are so amazing because even if God created angels first, they were all meant to bow down to this amazing creation that is human beings, which now that I think about, are we really amazing? Right. If we're killing, if we're killing other people, if we're using, if like, should, shouldn't God have known this? Right. Um, and, and, are, and aren't we like all like imperfect too? And like, we're all deserving of hell? Yeah, I know. Like, and even, then, even to his standard. <laughs> <laughs> Why would he have his yeah, angelic and, perfect being? And, 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 and then think about this, right? If um, Shaitan was uh, then who, who then who was an angel who became a devil because he didn't bow down to human beings, um, why why is he continuously um, why is he continuously trying to lure people into hell? Like so, like no, I no no wait. What I'm trying to say is, I think the reason people do bad things is because shaitan gets in their head. And that's how they, when I say they, and that's how I was taught to um, to fear all of it. Um, because obviously I'm driven by the devil if I do anything that's haram. Because I'm actually following, and I'm, I'm not following God, I'm disobeying God like shaitan did, and it is his doings. Not my own, and that's and that's really stupid because then we're crediting our bad actions to a spiritual being, right? And one thing that I don't get, um, I think it just adds to having the bathroom, hell. the bathroom gin. Oh my god! <laughs> the what? The bathroom gin. So I don't know. I don't know much about that. I don't know how he was told about it, but. Jin, jinns are spirits mm -hmm. in Islam, and I used to fear them so much. Honestly, the best thing that happened to me after coming out of Islam, like the very best thing was not being scared of the dark and the jinns and the spirits and stuff, because those were things I could never control. Everything else, I can, right? Well, to, to a degree, those are like supernatural beings were things that I could never comprehend or control um so like i would go to the house and i'm like is this house haunted and for the longest time i thought my house was haunted or something's wrong with it or something died or any nightmare i would get i would substantiate it with it's a spirit it's some it's something that i'm doing wrong um so yeah or so like what? oh oh the best was when i was on my periods i my parents or people in my school and like i don't remember all of the stories sometimes i'd like to think that my parents were really rational and they didn't feed all of this to me because i love them now despite our differences mm -hmm. um and it just puts me in such an awkward position to call them out on things so i don't remember where it came from but um i was told to not go under the trees while i'm menstruating because i am being vulnerable to those to i'm being vulnerable to being possessed by a jinn Jin? a spirit gotcha and now um specifically um in, in case i'm not understanding what is a jinn is, is it just a spirit or a, a, a specifically an evil spirit or more specifically a super duper they could evil? be various they could be there could be various. It could be really good ones who want nothing to do with the human beings and they're really nice, or they could be really bad ones who possess you and um, make you do evil stuff or make you go crazy. It's a, like, have you seen the movie The Exorcism? Yeah. The Exorcist. The Exorcist. Yes. Um, so yeah, that that could be one of the bad ones, but they could also be good ones. So just just spirit. Spirit. Is spirit yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Um, 
I, I could question you forever because this is a super fun talk. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I do want to give you, I want to just ask a couple more questions and then I want to open it up for questions from the chat specifically. Sure. Um, so I want to know what, one of my favorite things to know about um, any sect of religion or any religion in, in general is what do the end times look like? Because we have Exodus in our Bible, in the New Testament. Um, what for, do the, you for the Shia sect, it is the um, rising of Mahdi or the appearance of Mahdi. So Mahdi is the final 12th prophet. And he has been in hiding ever since I can remember, 1,300 years, I guess, 1,000 something years. Um, and he will come. I don't even know how this human being is surviving. So he has been in hiding and he will come. He will appear at one of the religious sites. I think it's Israel, somewhere in Israel. Um, and that's where he will appear. Um, and he's going to take over the world and he's going to kill all the non believers. And there will be good Muslims and bad Muslims. And only a few bad, only a few good Muslims are going to come to heaven with him. And all the other bad Muslims are going to be well defeated, like me. Like you. Well, I see. I'm, I'm meant to be a Muslim right now, right? Right. One has alcohol in her house. I can't pray. <laughs> yeah. So you're not going to any good place. No. Um, but uh, well, first, I said Exodus, and I meant Revelations. So sorry, everyone. <laughs> um, <clears throat> two. Um, you said who is. Who is coming back exactly? Mahdi. 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 M A H D I. Um, he is the so the way that Ahlul Bayt. Ahlul Bayt is the family of the Prophet. So I know there's so many Arabic words, and then I come out with my Arabic accent. Um, but I just don't want to sound like a um a person like like an English person trying to speak Arabic. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Ahlul Bayt is the family of the Prophet and it starts off with Ali, like it starts off with Muhammad and then his daughter Fatima and then Ali and then their sons and then grandsons and then their first, like you know obviously the grandsons are the first eldest son except for the, except for Ali's two sons. So basically it's just the family that has gone on. Um, and obviously they've had multiple wives and multiple kids, but I think only one person becomes the Imam or the leader. Um, and Mahdi is the last one and has been in hiding. I think they just got tired of making more. So they're like, you know, let's just end it at the 12. All right. Fair enough. Um, um, are you supposed to watch out for any signs of... Um... Oh, there are definitely so many signs. Um, there, I... One of them is uh, eclipse eclipses, which is very science. Yeah, which is which is very scientific because it happens once in a, depending on which one it is, once in a few years or a few, like a decade or two, right, um, right. or centuries. So yeah, it happens. So that that that's one of the signs. Um, the, the appearance of Mahdi is a sign. Um, homosexuality is a sign where men dress like women and women dress like men is a sign so um obviously that is again that's why is one of the reasons why muslims hate or you know they curse uh, transgender gay um, the lgbtiqi community for that because um that's then just um you know bringing the end of the day closer or that they're frowned upon and whatnot, but yeah, that's that's around some of them. If um, because um, do do Muslims look forward to the end times or are they afraid of them? I I, I remember I remember when war broke out in Iraq and Iran and Palestine. I was like, oh, let's just end this world. I can't see more people dying. Some people look forward to it very much. So. Um, you know, like, yes, we do have prayers for the reappearance and the safety of Mahdi um, in the Shia world. I'm not sure what the Sunnis do, but yeah, we do have prayers. They're like, oh, keep him safe and I hope he reappears soon. So to me, that is, well, you're looking forward to the end of time. Yeah, and it's, I think it's odd, like looking at it from outside of religion now, 
it, it, it sounds so odd to kind of just wish for death when we don't think there's anything after. Um, well, um, just outside religion, I never wanted to live past 35 because I never wanted to be old and gray and needy and, um, you know, I, I, for me, it felt like my career and a lot of my life would go downhill. Like, you know, I won't be able to do bungee jumping or I won't be able to do any high activities. So for me, it was, yes, it was stupid, but I was excited to get older. Not excited to die, but I was like, well, after 35, if I did die, I would be okay with it. But, you know, when I became an activist and I started getting a lot of abuse and threats, I, I learned to stop fearing death as much because that will always hold me back from speaking out, from doing things that are bold, like from, from doing this. Um, but, you know, because I fear death. So it was just a change in mindset where I'm like, look, whenever it happens, it happens. If it's, God forbid, <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> if it's tomorrow, then you just have to accept that, you know, you lived and you're dead and there's nothing to it. Right. I remember well, I remember filling out my uh, organ donation form, like, you know, my organ donor form. And I told my family because it's haram to do it. And it's not, it's, it's, recomm it's highly recommended against Islam, like in Islam to donate your organs because when you're dead, nobody should touch your body except bury it. Hmm. Um, and I remember telling my family and they were so upset about it. And I'm like, why? But I'm dead in like, you know, I'm mad at, like there's there's no point in having my body buried. Like, might as well just give it to science and like my eyes to somebody who can use it or however whatever they want from me. Like, what's the point? People should be doing that anyway. There are people living, breathing. Just give it to them. You know, like pass it around. Yeah. Um, make use of it, right? Sorry. Make use of it, right? Yeah, yeah. Make use of it. Um, and obviously that that freaked them out that I was so okay with seeing death that way that i was so okay with just like there's nothing to my body after that this is it there's no soul and they're like what about your soul they're like why don't you donate your organs now and i'm like because i need it like you have two kidneys so you can donate what and i'm like actually i would rather keep them both for now unless i'm in a position where um i'm very generous about it but for now, as, as, as kind as I want to be to the world after I die, for now, I, I want to have both. I want to be healthy. Yeah. Um, and just in case one fails, it's not like I can take it back. Right. Actually, I need that. <laughs> you, <laughs> you know you're really we, using it, are you? you no, know, we exchanged it a while ago. <laughs> like, yeah, we, I gave you mine, and then something happened to yours. Can I have that back? <laughs> right. Yeah, it's not so easy. <laughs> no. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, so is there anything um is there anything from your your from your your muslim life so if you can answer this as a muslim still that would be great mm -hmm. um, that really stands out um that's different from your life now um so like your your diet your um so alcohol, alcohol and pork, while I love bacon, like, you know, when I first started, when I first ate bacon, it was October 2017. Does yeah, anyone else know the first time they tried bacon? Because that's wonderful. I love that. October 2017, when my best friend made me, and she's like, are you okay with bacon? I'm like, we've never had it, but I'm having an experiment. And she's like, sure, and I remember that. And, I, and then I, I had bacon after that. But it was never a big thing for me, neither. Yeah. Like, you know, I was, I was, I was, um, so it was never a big thing for me. Um, so diet and stuff, no, um, that has been very different. I think it is the concept of uh, fearless, being fear, fearful and fearless. Um, I quite admire that about me now that I'm ready to take risks. Um, I'm not scared of um, hell anymore. I am like, you know, all the, you know, removing the fearfulness um, from my mindset has helped me take bolder steps, um, help more people, um, you know, become like, you know, I'm, I'm in tech. So like even just go out there and like, I, I wouldn't say dominate, but like get my right position in tech because that is very difficult, by the way. For those of you who think gender pay gap does not exist, it exists. Um, 
it exists and I, I think it's um well different topic but yeah it, it it requires women to actually recognize it like not the gender pay gap but like their their position in tech and to and we kind of have to fight it a little harder um because a lot of women don't ex a lot of people don't expect women to so like i at my last job i negotiated my page like i had a significant amount um and i had to like get the right position that i wanted and whatnot but you know the the concept of being fearful and fear fearless has definitely stood out to me sure. and, and and like obviously that relates a lot to your role as a woman like there's so many mm -hmm. underlying issues because like when you're muslim you know this is how you should be woman like you know that their men are a degree above you and you know and you would always fear that oh like you know i should be like that or, or else if i don't respect that i'm gonna go to hell and just things like that like there's so many underlying issues that come that stem from fear that have definitely helped me now when i come to think of it all my podcasts have been so different like the concept of fear has been widely spoken about in this one the one before it it was a lot about sexism and women enabling the patriarchal society and then the one before that it's always been so different like there've always been like one theme that has stemmed out of uh, well depending on who the interviewer is and where the conversation is leading so thank you for that it's something that i'm not aware of that thank i think you. about but yeah fearfulness and fearless thank you. um that's um well, one, the bacon thing is really neat. <laughs> Just, um, but two, it's, um, yeah, I I know fear is a really big factor in, in most religions. Um, and I can imagine that being a Muslim and a woman um, fighting for any kind of rights is like not good or safe um, for like your well-being. Um, so I really, really appreciate like what you do um, and how I much mean, you speak out, I think is really amazing. I mean, I've had, honestly, it's so disgusting to actually have men, well, the theme has been men, but also women have done this to me. I've had people sexually harass me online, but I've also had women who've called me things like ugly or that you're fat or that have you seen yourself in the mirror and just and i'm like you're talking to somebody who doesn't have self-esteem issues like it's easier when people are conscious about it but i i don't i've accepted who i am i'm perfect with all my flaws and i love who i am so you're talk, you're trying to shut someone up using that tactic instead of a, a, an argument and not even just shutting but like even rebuting my argument with another one that is an intellectual one mm -hmm. you, instead of using that that's you you're trying to use um these attacks that are so petty mm -hmm. and it and some women give into that and it make like well you can't blame them right like how many times are you going to be shot down until you know you remain down but i had to look at things in such a different light to go like the more they shoot me down the, the higher i'll rise and the harder i'll, I'll come up um and that's why I think, well, either people are giving me too much credit for what I'm doing, but I feel that is my greatest strength. And that also comes from the people that have been supporting me because for every 10 negative messages, if I receive one positive one, it helps me know that, hey, it doesn't matter. There will be a million haters, but if you, change, if you can change one person's life, that is one person who stopped themselves from committing suicide, or there's one person who's heard, and there's one person who slept better at night. Because all those people who give out hateful comments, it's not a reflection on me, it's a reflection on them. And if they can sleep like, and if, if they can sp sleep big so hateful personally to people, like there's a difference between throwing out in, like ideas saying, hey, look, I don't agree with you because of this, or in, versus I don't agree with you because you're just mean, or crazy or stupid or dumb um so you know if there's one person's life that i can help change that is more satisfying to me and well that is one reason why i fear my death to be too soon because i, I want to continue help other people um and at some point i'd love to get full time into what i do but i also love being in tech so much um and i realized that last night when i was talking to you at 4 a.m and i'm like oh i am doing a case study and i'm programming um, 
So yeah, um, I realized that so much that I'm not ready to give up my whole tech career and surely there'll be a way to merge it. But I love, I love that I have the opportunity to still work in that. Um, again, I'm diverting from questions, um, but yeah. So yeah, just in light of what I do, it annoys me that people use those tactics to, um, to make their argument have more substance. It doesn't. And people who like it even annoy me more because it just validates that, that very disturbing attitude. Yeah. It's, it's, it's valid. And I'm like, I'm like, okay, can you imagine if you were in my position, no matter who, what gender you are, no matter who you are, and receiving all that hate and then having somebody else like it? Like, right. You're, you're enabling them, even if, you, even if you agree with them, but, you know, even if you agree with them that I should not talk about Islam, that, you know, the fact that you're liking an argument like that just makes me think, um, just makes me think that this is why they continue doing. And some of them are women as well. I don't, I, like, you know, I've always believed, and my mom and my parents have always told me that women lift other women up. Right? You should never be, you know, this is, everybody should lift everyone up. But I, I come from a place where um, I was mostly like, you know, my role in tech was mostly driven by my curiosity to fix things like in engineering. Um, but in order for me to stay and work in it, I was inspired by other women leaders. So I always believed and I always, and I heard this so many times that we need to leave, lift other women up. And then when I see other women subjugating themselves and I see other women just um, preying on other women or enabling men to prey on them, and I'm like, how would you like it if I did the opposite? Because I, I, I know that my Twitter has some Trump supporters and Christian fundamentals and, you know, not everybody's like, you'll always, you, will, you will always have that, um, you will always have that, no, no, but nobody, you're not going to agree with everybody's ideas, but sometimes when you have something in common, you stick to that topic, right? Like, like just recently I posted up things about um, talking to Christians and Hindus who support my Islamic views, which are no Islam. And I was like, just so you guys know, I'm not endorsing any of your religion. I think a world without religion is better. And people started putting this mental gymnastics defending Hinduism or Christianity. And I'm like, wait, 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 hold on. So you're okay with giving another religion shit, but you can't take it back. And then people started unfollowing me. And I'm like, that's okay. That's fine. I, you don't need to be validated by me. I don't need to agree to everything that you stand for. That is like, that is that, like, I, I, you know, I've yet to even meet one ex Muslim that shares all the same ideas as I do. Right, we're all different people. We'll all have our different um, belief systems, or lack of, or you know, we'll all see things differently. And sometimes we bond over that one thing, and sometimes we have discussions and disagreement about others. It's just learning to respect. I like it's just learning to respect that we have those differences. Um, but yeah, so I, I do have like Trump supporters and Hindus and Christians, and they they get off they, they got offended over me saying that I am not endorsing it, and I'm like. You know, this is who I am. Um, and the chat um, was was saying, and I agree with, um, because people are saying like you're ugly, you're fat, and that's that's just an ad hom, right? Yeah, it's just like that's, that's stupid. It's not even really an argument. Um, but we all disagree. We think you're gorgeous, and you're definitely not fat. So <laughs> now that you need oh, us to you. tell to to tell you that, but no, again, again, I, 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 I have learned, and it took me a lot of time to. Well, I will relate this back to hijab. It took me a lot of time to um, accept myself for who I am, with all my flaws, with my intellectual deficiencies that I still have to address. And I, and I have always told this to people five years ago that I'm an evolving person, mm -hmm. so I'm open to learning. And there definitely are topics that I would not you know, that people go like, oh, but you should be able to have a conversation about it. And I'm like, I know that this is not healthy for me, so I am going to step away from it. So like there is things like uh, Jordan Peterson and his um, alleged sexist views. And that's something that I do not endorse. And people are like, well, you should be able to have a conversation about it. And I'm like, there will be a time and place when I'll be willing to have it, mm -hmm. but I have my views about it now and there's no way changing it. Maybe I need to do more research to accept him, to accept those views, but 
the person I am right now is not going to be able to. But yeah, it took a lot of, um, with like accepting my physical appearance and removing the hijabs. I was 18 when I took off the hijab, like when I started loosening it up and then removing it when I moved to Australia when I was 19, it was a new life. But I'd never worn, I'd never worn a dress until 2016. I'd never ever worn like a long, a short dress. It was always either long dresses. I always wore cardigans on top because I was so scared. Um, and by the way, I was really skinny. Um, so I was so scared to show, uh, like I was so scared to show my skin because I'm like, oh, what if there's a strand of hair that people can see? Or like, what if, what if people are just objectifying me? Or you know, there were so many thoughts that came through my mind and it, it, it took, I feel like I, I can only, <laughs> I can only like I can only sympathize. I can't even empathize anymore because it was so scary for me to go through that. And I still work with people who are like, who are kind of going through that as well. The, the the women who were wearing hijab and they want to take it out. And some of them are like, oh, I wore shorts for the first time just around my house. And it made me feel weird. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, it's, it's really interesting seeing yourself in a different light. Like I'd never worn shorts in my life until like a year and a half ago. Um, even around the house, I'd never worn it, so. And do do you find it empowering now? Do you find it more comfortable now? How do you how do you feel about it? Indifferent. 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 Like I don't I don't see anything to like you know whether I'm covered or not or I I I well the clothes that I wear make me feel indifferent, but the fact that I got over that fear is empowering. So be it, you know, I remember when I took off the hijab in Australia and my mom's like, oh, I know you're moving to a Western country and it might be hard because people are going to be racist. And I'm like, mom, if you know me, if you know me at all, the only reason I would wear a headscarf in Australia is for exact that same reason, for somebody to be racist and for me to call them out on it. Mm -hmm. Like, I love challenging ideas. I've always been like this. Even when I was a Muslim, I would challenge atheist ideas until two years ago, until, until a year and a half ago when I, had, I was in that self-denial. Um, I remember talking to somebody, uh, he's a journalist, and I said, you can think of atheism as a religion as well, if people want to believe in what they want to believe in. And he just went like, hmm, that's, that's all he replied. And, I, and then I read back to that conversation, and I was like, I changed a lot, and a lot of it had to do with letting go, because I was trying so hard. You know, being a, being a Muslim by name, or even being a Muslim, is so much easier than coming out, because everything else comes follows it. You know, I could always be a Muslim by name and do everything else, but not question the belief. And it would be so much easier. But it was um, it was very interesting to how much I had changed. Um, are there any questions for me? I know there were some. Yes, uh -huh. yes, there were. Um, the first one, real quick. And also, um, before I get to them, thank you for sharing no so much so far. This has been a really wonderful conversation. I really like talking to you. Um, <clears throat> But, um, I think everybody would agree. <laughs> I think they would. <laughs> so the first one was actually by uh, vibrantly Brantley. Um, what what does she think about people burning the Quran? Um, I had a similar question from girls in the U.S. who peed on it. <laughs> okay. Um, and I'm like, okay, fine. Did that make you happy? And they're like, I think so. And I'm like, okay. But you know, that, that's up to you. It's uh, I, I honestly, there is some knowledge gained from the Quran, whether it's like increasing your knowledge about a religion, mm -hmm. um, or well, even if you're against it, but it's always knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, and I have, I had been taught, and I'd been taught never to um, destroy any book. Gotcha. Right. Never, never to destroy any book. I mean, surely somebody can give me a Quran as a present, a translated one, and I would appreciate the thought of them giving me a present. And I could always use the Quran to increase my knowledge about Islam even more. Right. right? You don't. You don't need to be a Muslim to know about Islam, and you don't need to be a Muslim to speak against it, and you don't need to be a Muslim to read the Quran. You can always read the Quran to, I would say, to serve your narrative at the very least. So burning the Quran, one, you know, not great for the environment. Um, if you want to discard it, discard it. Um, one, it's also too much effort. Like, why? 
It's just too much. To, like I remember throwing away some of my religious books, and they were like, there were things that I could never see on the floor that I would pick up and kiss because I. This is how you do it, because you feel so guilty about like them being on the floor. So maybe it's a bit of conditioning that I have, but I have thrown it away. I just don't see the point of going all the way and burning it. Yes, I understand that you want to aggravate people. That's okay. Do it. Um, if that's if that's your tactic, and I have done things very similarly, I will post up things and like quotes, uh, like hard on, like you know, hard, hard, on, uh, hard, hard, very hard and um, very discriminatory quotes that have been said by Muslims, mm. um, or the literal like verses from the Quran that clearly, if anybody reads it, you can tell it's hate or it's hate against women um so yeah like i i have been known to aggravate people and my idea was always around if they hate it they're going to say something about it but then what comes from it is well some some of them will respond with hate um like personal attacks versus you know defying that but then what happens is at some point somebody will come up and say i don't appreciate what you're doing because the quran has taught me this because there's this good things and i'm like okay the good things that you're doing and then that's what opens up conversations sometimes it is. the aggression the aggression works on people some of them and some for some time for some people different methods work so burning the quran I would not personally do it because one it's too much effort and i don't like believe in destroying the environment and I don't know. Maybe I'm not ready to cross that line yet. Right. And not everyone um, fights religion or anything that they're fighting in the same way, right? Yeah. I mean, there's, um, like, you know, Drew from, from, gen from genet genetically. genetically. Yeah, I can't talk tonight. Um, um, and you've, had and too I, you've, had, you've had too much drink. Not yet. But, <laughs> um, but we we have a similar way of going about um, yeah. fighting religion. But Godless Engineer, on the other hand, mm -hmm. um, has a completely different way. It's much more aggressive. Um, and R and Ra, there's I mean there's there's so many different ways to go about. And it, um, and it works honestly. It works for different yeah. audiences. It works it for different people. And the when when it works for me means that it sends a message across in any form. And um, if the and it really surprises. Well, my Twitter was banned recently because um, this guy started. Well, one, he comes on my wall, and then you know he's like, "Stop talking shit about my religion." I'm like, "You don't have to see it. That's not your religion. It's an ideology. Like, it's up to you. I don't come on your wall and start like rambling. I I, I can. I showed you're allowed to free speech. That's fine." Mm -hmm. And then he just started harassing me, but be it like you're dumb or whatever and like you'll burn in fire or comparing me not wearing or women not wearing a headscarf to being naked and whatnot and then i said it's and then he said something about being a kuf i yeah <laughs> not for some muslim men right not for some muslim men and the key word some some um the reason i well well one the reason i use some is because my family is muslim and for me to put a blanket statement on like my brother or my dad is is well is crazy because my brother and i have recently become very close talking about things like i'm trying to open his mind up not to like atheism or some or anything but to like like he he didn't particularly see women as half of men but he admires he's now learning to admire women who are not dependent on him so he tries making like you know he's trying to teach his daughter to be more independent um and like you know encouraging education which when i was when i was doing my when i when i had finished my bachelor's and i was doing my master's he was like why are you studying like it's not going to help you you're just going to come back home are you going to get married or you know he never really said that he's like it's good that you're studying but my mom had said you're going to get married and have kids why are you studying so i'm trying to slowly open up that conversation and know that there are forms that they can change so the reason i say some is because i always put into consideration that the closest people, the people I love the most, are not are not all terrorists. Despite, like, they're not terrorists as you know people think that all Muslims are terrorists. I have to be very careful with how I project Muslims versus my opinions against Islam, because I still have Muslim friends, and I I still like you know I, I still love you as a person. 
I, I still respect that you have a belief. I don't have to respect your beliefs. Right. Um, you know, I respect that you want to believe in something. I respect that you want to have a choice in that. And I respect that you have a choice in that. Some people don't, right? Some people right. don't have it. Um, so I always use a sum, but back to the Twitter thing, this guy was uh, very abusive and he said, um, all kufirs are going to go to hell, you're all crazy, or some vague thing. And then I said, better to be a kufir than a Muslim man who harasses women or an imam that molests uh, children. Right. All facts, and he, he, um, he reported it, and Twitter banned me for 12 hours, which is fine, it's 12 hours. At this point, I don't even want to use their platform, but I feel like I need to kind of listen. But um, it's just like, I actually emailed them and they didn't even respond to it. I yeah. went like, you're banning me on that case, which is a fact, he harassed me, look at his other tweets. They didn't even like, you know, if you're going to ban somebody based on one tweet, look at their other tweets, look at who's complaining, look at what made them, like, I know you don't have a lot of work, but if you're if you're a corporate or like if you're like so if you're a social media that is encouraging free speech and not hate speech then you need to under then you need to have better policies in place like Absolutely. dude hire me and i will lead your whole team <laughs> yeah sometimes yeah. I, sometimes I i once found a bug in somebody's like an uber website and then i told him if you're looking for somebody to work for you i, I can lead the team you know i can i can work that like, yeah. And I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> but so yeah, it 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 was surprising that Twitter did not ban him, and I and I even reported it on my Twitter. So if you guys are on Twitter and following, there is a his. I don't mind being a. I'm tolerant to all the abuse now. Like it doesn't affect me. But I saw the way he spoke to other women, and like that is one of my biggest. Like it's a it's a big sensitive spot for me. So yeah. him just saying that you're a dirty kuffer or like you're all gonna go to hell. It's Fine, you're entitled to your opinion, but come on, stop abusing people. Like, that's not nice. And right. sometimes, and I think the worst I have done on Twitter was call somebody, or was tell somebody who was 21 that I, I think that, uh, with, I even said this at the risk of sounding very condescending. I remember the tweet, you're, you're still very young um, and you have a lot of life experiences to learn. And, from what I've gathered from my from your tweets and other people that have spoken to you, you're not listening. And I feel like that will come over time. So it'll be interesting to see, to have a conversation with you in a few years to see if that has changed. And he just went like, my age has nothing to do with it. I'm like, I get that. Like I said, at the risk of sounding very condescending and I don't mean to put you down, but it is something that I've noticed. And age sometimes has a place in it. There's, it, it comes with like life experiences, it comes with exposure. It comes to how much, like, you know, before, like, I, when I was younger, I used to be very self-centered. Like, I didn't, like, every other problem was, like, every other problem in the world was somebody else's to solve, not mine. So now I've changed. Now I'm, like, trying to help in very little ways that I can. But right. age plays a factor in it. It does, that, absolutely. It is a factor. Yeah. Um, go, we'll go ahead and we'll try to speed through some of these questions so we can get to them all. Sure. Um, I don't want to go too long just because less people watch the longer it is. And I want to make sure people yeah. get yeah. to hear you. Um, Casey uh, DeGrave asks, mm -hmm. um, how hard was it to come out as an atheist to your family and friends? Um, never really came out to my friend. Uh, to, to, well, I didn't have, when I moved to Australia, um, I tried not having a lot of Tanzanian friends. One, there aren't many. Two, I really wanted to integrate. I wanted a new social circle. So, so there were some Muslim friends of mine who were still here, but I had a lot of friends who were free thinkers, open-minded, because I could actually have a conversation with them. So to my friends, it it felt like a, like I didn't even have to come out. I just they just saw me start challenging ideas on Facebook and Instagram. But to my family, before I even came out or anything, I was like. I remember, well, my niece passed away January 2017, and that was really, that was a difficult time for all of us. So it wasn't great news to tell them I'm falling out of religion. Mm -hmm. So I waited for a few months, and then I realized that I am just getting suffocated if I don't tell them. And if I'm going to come out public at some point, I think they should learn to accept it first. I told them first, and they're like, what do you mean? You, like, don't believe in God, like, at all? And I'm like, 
I, I think I'm falling out of it. I, I don't see God. I can't, nobody can prove him to, to me. It's, it's not happening. Like it's, it, I have no, they're like, but do you still consider yourself as a Muslim? And I'm like, no. So it started off when I stopped accepting Islam and then the idea of God just broke down. Like it wasn't, I wasn't even spiritual. Mm -hmm. um, so to my family, um, they, they were, for the longest time, they were in denial. Um, but then they learn to accept it and they're still learning. Um, I, I will do a YouTube video or a channel, like a 30 minute thing on acceptance, bridging, bridging um, the gaps between relationships. And just from my personal experience and how my family was in denial, pushed me to pray, sent me forwards, just tried debating me to then going like, you what you say offends us but if it makes you happy and you truly believe you're doing the right thing go for it so from coming like you know coming from one end to another how i learned to navigate through things and how i talk to other faithless hijabis or women that come to me and sometimes they're young and sometimes they're old and i always talk about acceptance um so i will do a podcast and i'm not going to spill too soon it's too much of it but it wasn't that it was it was difficult emotionally but I had no physical threats to me. And I was lacking about a, a bit of emotional support from my family, but I had to get over that by, I would say being dependent on the right people for that support, which are my friends who were, who would accept me for who I am. And they happened to be all atheists who didn't care if I was Muslim, really. Even when I was Muslim, they didn't really care. They, they just, they never saw me as like, it was never a barrier, but now my Muslim friends see me as like a different person. Like they're like, oh, she's an atheist. She's yeah. like, it never, it was never the other way around where they went like, oh, she's a Muslim. They still talk about God and religion, and sometimes I go, like, I agree with you, even when I still was a Muslim. So yeah. it just shows how different people's priorities are when it comes to religion. It really does, it really does. Um, uh, Zero asked, oh, would she be welcome home? If she, or would she be welcome if she visited home today? Um, I think you kind of answered that. I feel like you would, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I went. I went to visit my family in April, and my sister is coming over soon next month. I the idea is for she she wears a whole hijab, not her face not covered. But the idea is to like stand next to her in shorts and go like, see, we can still get along, and we do. We we talk every day. They would really like for me to come home. Um, I know that it will take a bit of an emotional toll on me, a bit of PTSD, seeing them practice it so heavily um not that they've they've ever they would make jokes like hey do you want to pray and i'm like no and uh -huh. I, I should take it i should take it light lighter than i do mm -hmm. but i lightly lightly than i do but um it's it's unfortunately it doesn't work out every time like sometimes i have to be headstrong um uh, but no i am i am quite welcome um there we're, we're planning to do an easter meetup because i refuse to go to tanzania i don't want to be around tanzanian family and friends who basically ostracized me, isolated me. Not my, well, my immediate family is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know about my cousins as much, but um, no, I just don't, it's just a toxic environment for me to be in Tanzania. There isn't much to do, but they're welcome to my place and they've wanted to come. It's just Australia is so far from Tanzania. So we're planning to do a meetup somewhere in either some part of the Middle East or <laughs> like, like Dubai or something, or, um, if I move to London, maybe they'll all just fly to London and we'll just have a small reunion for Easter. Gotcha. Um, and uh, two short questions for you with that is um, one, uh, do you guys celebrate Easter? No, we don't. Okay. But it's a holiday and we get time off and Tanzania is Christian dominated, okay. not a democratic country. So we get time off and school holidays. And so that means it's holiday. Okay. And I think that- I celebrate. I celebrate Easter. I celebrate everything that has celebration and that I can be happy. That's fantastic. Except for Eid. I'm still yeah. learning how to accept it. Eid? Eid? Yeah, okay. So Eid, if you don't know what it is, it's a celebration. There are multiple Eids, but one of the big ones is the, the day after the month of fasting, after Ramadan ends, the month of fasting. So it's a happy food people kind of day. Um, it's Well, one, it's celebrating that you're not fasting anymore. Yeah. But also marking the end of the very prestigious month. Um, I, I'm still learning how to celebrate it because I don't have a lot of Muslim friends that would want me there. 
So unlike my Christian friends, and I celebrated Christmas amazingly, they were, they were religious, but they didn't really care. And that, you know, when they were praying and they wanted me to hold their hand, I'm like, fine, I'll do it. Like, it's, it's a little different for me, but if it means that much to you, I will do it. Um, I didn't have to pray. I know that I have to conform to it, but I had to, like, I was there. Um, so no, it is something that is so difficult for me to have the right people to celebrate it with. Cause it's like, you know, sometimes you just want to be around that same food that you had at home with friends here, but you're obviously not going to get invited to it because you offend them. So. Right. Right. Um, Christine, Christy Santiago has a question for you. It is, um, what is the okay. most rewarding moment since you've become an activist? And I'll let you know something about her real quick. She, uh, she became an atheist uh, um, about a month, I think, before you did. So you got oh, really? about on the same timeline. Um, the most rewarding is, well, when I first started, I had no idea what I was doing with Faithless Hijabi. I, I didn't know what was happening. I just, I was unemployed like I am right now. Um, but I was unemployed and I was looking for a drive and I started Faithless Hijabi and then I got so much backlash for it, so much. And um, not, not for Faithless Hijabi, for coming out. But then when I started Faithless Hijabi, somebody you know, a few people wrote to me, they're like, thank you, you saved my life in a way. And then I'm like, how, like, what did I do? I, I want to know what I did, because all I did was what any good person should do is listen to you. And any good friend or any good family member, or a family member should do, or any friend should do. Um, and she's like, no, apparently they don't. It's, it's really hard to find people that would understand. And that was the most, like, you know, the first few messages and, one of the other rewarding part was when I came out as an atheist, I'm still mentioned on Saturday schools. Don't be like Zara. Really? Yeah. Interesting. So I, I find that very rewarding that I'm challenging things. Yeah. That, that, you know, people thought that they could shut me down by attacking my family and they have, like they they verbally have, they have harassed my family online. Like, you know, my family kind of feel a bit isolated um, and I feel sad for that, but my cause is bigger than this. And I feel horrible that they have to go through this. And that's why I tried cutting things off with them. So that way I'm like, that way you can tell people she's not in our lives. My family is like, you're more important than anything else. So it's good that you have that kind of support. Yeah. So, you know, it was like, you know, it's, I want to help my next video. I want to help the next video to un to help Muslims and ex-Muslims bridge those gaps despite differences and despite having different values. I think we can always we can always find a common ground to be um, nice to each other and to make other people less miserable. Right. The, yes, and I'm I'm not going to make that a bigger topic than yeah. should I, I should get to more questions, um, but yeah. Um, <clears throat> I'm excited to see um, you have more content. I'm very excited for it. I, I am really, I'm really camera shy. See, this I can do. Maybe what I should do is I should have you and just record myself talking about it. <laughs> there we go. I, I can't talk to myself, and I'm like, what am I going to do? Am I, am I like, do I look at myself? Like, how does this work? Yeah. Well, um, we can talk about that after the show a little bit if you want. Yeah. To. I can give you some pointers, or I can just we can just set something up, and I'll just I'll be right here okay. watching it. <laughs> um, uh, Pakistani joke boy asks, yeah. um, "What do you think about women in a job now that you are no longer a Muslim?" So, I think, I, I think hijab is a patriarchal is a patriarchal tool of oppression. Do I think that Muslim women are oppressed? No. Again, I always put things into perspective when I'm thinking about this because I have friends and family and it's not it's not a blanket statement amongst it. But I feel that a lot of people do not know what it stands for. Um, I think they make up excuses for it. I think they have always been taught to respect it. While it still makes me, a, like, I wouldn't say com uncomfortable, but well, while it still makes me a little jittery because it reminds me of my past and how i felt when i wore a hijab like i thought i loved it until when i took it off and i received so much backlash for it and it makes me feel scared to to, to see women wearing hijab thinking like what if they ever want to remove it i don't want them to receive that backlash i want it to be normalized mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. 
while I understand that not all of the women want to get out of it, there are there is a significant amount that want to get out of it. So when I see them, that's that's the thoughts that cross my mind. I'm like, how are they going to do it? How are they actually going to come out? What are, what is their plan? Do they have do they have a plan? What is going to happen when they're when you know when people abuse them or ostracize them? Right, right, right. It, 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 and I hear an echo <laughs> of myself. Um, it's really hard to even just speak up about it because you you're not sure if it's safe to say, yeah, I don't want to wear it. Yeah, um, of course. You don't know who you can trust to say that? So, you, so it's really hard to say how many how many women don't want to wear it. Yeah, and I think well could I think, be like a huge majority, but yeah, and um, more on the hijab thing will probably be happening this weekend on the hijab day and the no hijab day. So watch yeah, out that? for that first uh, of Feb. So watch out for Twitter, not just mine, but everybody. Look at the hashtags, hijab day, no hijab day. I think it'll help you understand different people looking at it differently, whether it's ex-Muslims, Muslim women also are against the hijab. So, you know, it's different people will have a different attitude towards it. Um, but I, I will possibly be on a live podcast at midnight or something. But we will, yeah, but we will figure this out. Like what, there, there will be a lot happening on the first of them. Okay. Um, um, absolutely. Send me a link or something for that too. Yeah. I'd, uh, I'd love to watch um, and share. Uh, Pakistani joke boy also wants to know if you've been banned from Pakistan yet. No, not yet. So I don't know. Oh, many people, so I don't know when many, if many people, many of my followers or anyone are Pakistanis. I'm still quite low key because I don't, I want to talk more about my cause than my cause and intellectual like and, and, and engage in intellectual debates versus what I see some ex-Muslims doing is go full on political. For me, it's more philosophical and um, psychological than it is political. And I think, you know, all three of them can be drivers to different outcomes. So Pakistan as a country, no, have I been, have I been banned by being in some Pakistanis' lives? Sure, some have blocked me. Okay. Um, Pakistani joke boy has a lot of questions. Um, <laughs> did, um, did you dabble with um, spiritual stuff when you I did. Out of Islam? So like crystals, healing, energy, any of that? Not crystals, but I did look into Buddhism because I thought that was it's more spiritual than it is um, than than other Abrahamic religions are. And I love the concept of the power of now and you know living in this time than the others, but. It just didn't make sense to me. There was like, I, whenever I tried meditating and I couldn't feel the energies outside, what I would actually think of when I was meditating was more science. I would think of blood flowing in my body and I would think of like my skin, like the, the skin touching or like me sitting on the sofa versus the energy sound. Yeah, I know my uh, wife has looked into that. Yeah. Too, and she really likes it. I don't think she like believes in it, but she really does. Yeah, appreciate they're different. It. I I feel like there are different aspects of spirituality, and people make it what they want it to be, whatever suits them. But yes. for me, it's just the higher being and energies, and karma and everything else. It it makes no scientific sense to me, and I'm an engineer, so if it's not ones and zeros and probability and psychology that is understandable, it doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. Jeez, I'm not that bad. Stop panicking. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm the rudest host. <laughs> um, not Joe Witness. I'm not sure if you've heard of him. He's fantastic. I always need to talk him up because he helps me um, a fucking lot. <laughs> um, but Not Joe Witness um, is in Australia. Uh, so he says. Are you so in I, Sydney or Melbourne? Huh? Is he in Sydney or Melbourne? Um, he doesn't say. Um, he's okay. he's very. Um, like he oh, well. a voice changer too. Okay, well, if he still wants to like, come to some of my conferences in Sydney and Melbourne that are happening next week, oh. um, or if he can promote it, that would be amazing because I would he really would love it. it. He would yeah, it Sydney and Melbourne. So they're all, they're, there's one on the 6th uh, where we're screening Islam and the future of tolerance. Um, and then I'll be on the Q&A panel. 
And then there's one on the seventh that is me and Amin Nababi. He's also in the Q&A panel for the, the first one, cool. uh, talking about Islam and reformation. Um, and that is in Redfern in Sydney. And then Melbourne has it on the ninth, the eighth and the ninth. Um, and that's on losing your religion with other ex-Muslims. So that should be interesting. That it, it sounds very interesting. I'm excited yeah. to, to yeah. see that. It's, 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 it's hectic times for me, but I'm excited to share. Yeah. But yeah. Well, I'm excited question? for you because you're out there. But um, his question is, he, he, he says it's a very, very important one. Um, okay. Being in Australia, uh -huh. what is your favorite beer? I don't drink beer. Oh. So, 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 I don't drink wine, I don't drink champagne, and I don't drink beer. So I am more of a scotch person. I'm more of a scotch whiskey person. Um, okay. I don't like bourbon as much, um, but smoky scotch is my favorite. Mm -hmm. um, I inherited a lot of alcohol from my friend who moved from, from Australia to the US. So I got like 12 or 20 bottles, and I haven't bought any alcohol except for vodka for like... <laughs> So like this was one of them, and <coughs> something similar. That is nice. Okay. I don't I don't know a lot of brands. I'm very new to alcohol, so I started drinking like 18 months ago. But even then, I would take like three or four months break, and like I don't drink every weekend. I um, because I have a lot of work to do, and I want to be like hit, like you know in the game. I try drinking less, but there have been like wild nights. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, like my birthday was really nice. Like the whole of November and December leading up to Christmas was really nice. Um, pretty much went out drinking like every couple of days. And then just before Christmas is when I stopped drinking. I didn't drink during Christmas, <laughs> Christmas and New Year. This was, I just stopped. That's really funny. So, no, um, I don't know much okay. about beers. I that's, went for beer tasting funny. at one of those um, brewery in... I think it's in Newtown, and he would know it. Um, they're really good at it, but I did not like it. Hmm. I didn't like it. I don't think I could get myself to drink beer. I've I tried cider. Oh, cider? I yeah, tried those, cider. those are kind of good. But like, it was OK, like the apple peach cider. Mm -hmm. But that was OK. I like those. I've actually never finished a beer, mm. waiting for the hate comments. Um, but <laughs> but um, so I think we only have like two or three questions left. Um, <clears throat> um, Orly DR podcast uh, would like to know if you'd like to come on on a show sometime. Um, Can you, you just interview? I would, I would love to come on podcasts, um, but it would have to wait like from <laughs> Christy. Um, it would have to wait until after mid Feb because I am relocating and I'm trying to commit to less things, but I'm so, I'm so easy to talk into. <laughs> like, um, like send me a twitter or facebook message and we can set up a time even if it's like a month from now um i love podcasts to be honest more than i do mainstream media so i'm just yeah. so i have people contacting me for mainstream media um and i've just been like ignoring it for a bit <laughs> that's fair because <coughs> Um, and Go for it. does does she know any Muslims that think the Earth is flat? I do not know any Muslims that think the Earth is flat. I've been around very, I've been around very different ones, so I don't know any Muslims who think the Earth is flat. Um, Brantley wants to know. He has two questions. I'll ask him as one. Mm -hmm. Um. He says, did you have your piercing? Um, I think that means before, as you were yeah. a Muslim. And what do they think of tattoos? I uh, have a, I, I, I have seen I, your tattoo. I have a tattoo here that I got in April. So it actually, sorry. So it actually says free. So it's like a, I'm gonna like sure. try without, without. Yeah, so it actually says free on the bottom here. Okay. Um, I always knew, like, before I was even a Muslim, I always knew that I was, I wouldn't say a free soul as such. I always knew that I was, um, I loved my independence. Mm -hmm. Even, like, even while being a Muslim, I just loved my independence. And I think that was one of the biggest drivers coming out of Islam was um, 
not being subjugated or not fitting into gender roles or not fitting into the societal norms. So Muslims refrain from tattoos. They have fatwas on it. My brother has a tattoo. Um, so he's not the, he's, he's amazing, but he's not the best kind of Muslim because he has a tattoo and he prays like five times a day. He's like very religious. But um, if you see me talking about my family a lot, it's because they're the closest people I know that are Muslims and that I know how, how they think um, and that we can have an honest conversation without me, um, oh, we have our boundaries. So without me like um, judging them because you know, family has a special place. Um, but a few things, I got this when I was 17. Oh no, wait, I got the top ear ones when I was 12. Okay. I was 12, so I got, I got those before I got the, the, the normal earlobe ones uh, and it was when my mom had traveled to Kenya so my mom is Kenyan um, she had traveled to Kenya to see her family and um, a building next to my house collapsed it was in construction and I woke up and I'm like I want a piercing and I was 12 obviously you need an adult to go with you so I, I tricked my sister into it and I got my dad to give me money and I was like why do you need money and I'm like I need I need to do something and then he's like uh, I'm busy right now it's just on the table took money went got piercings he had no idea I'd done it like you know three weeks later my mom comes back and I'm like mommy I got piercings and she's like I'll give you the money who went with you how, how did you go and my dad's like I don't know what happened because like, it wasn't me um, they, accepted it. they accepted it. My parents, my parents can be strict, but also very chilled out. And if you put a logical argument, they're either going to ignore it or they're going to go like, do what you want. So they like to like just do what. So when I got this one, I used to wear a headscarf. I was seventeen. I used to wear a headscarf, mm -hmm. and I was so proud of it. And I went to Iran like right after getting it. I went to Iran like three months in because my family's religious and they want. We wanted to meet up and we wanted to go to Iran. And I've always wanted to visit it, visit all the religious places because I was kind of religious at the time. Mm -hmm. And I wore a headscarf, and my mom saw me in the airport and she's like, "It looks nice, but can you hide it?" Like so, my head. So I would try wearing my headscarf like that. Like, yeah, as, as much as I could hide it. But then there were people, there were other Tanzanians who went there, like who went to Iran and were in the same hotel. Um, and they saw it and they're like, so can you change it? Like, is it haram and stuff? And I know people at the mosque, like Iranians at the mosque went like, oh, it's haram. And I'm like, no, it's actually not. Like I have read the rules before doing it because I had to put up a good argument. Like whenever I want to do things like this, I put up a good argument to do it. And then I got my lip piercing back in 2015. So I was not ex-Muslim then. Um, I was, I was, I was a rebel, but yeah, all all piercings gotten before I became ex-Muslim. You rebel, you. <laughs> I'm, I'm like the golden child and the black sheep of the family. Oh, okay. Yeah, like so I'm the middle child. I'm the middle. Ch I'm the middle child, the first one who got a degree, let alone a master's, and so you know, and then like have a have a steady career. Well, except for the unemployment because just too fussy but um so the golden child and then the black sheep because like everything that i've done is rebellious from piercings to like drinking alcohol to then being an atheist i was an atheist before i drank alcohol just putting it out there um mm -hmm. um but yeah black sheep and the golden child that's pretty cool that's pretty cool got a good mix i balance it's yin yang say what oh the balance yeah what? yin yang Y yin yang the balance oh yeah. Yin, yeah yes so <laughs> um well i think that's all that i have for you yeah going through all the questions well, feel free to like ask me on twitter or like just block or like report people who are mean to other people on twitter yes yeah yeah Always I, do it. Take, take, that, not... take that take that one minute of an effort to like help those being bullied Yes, absolutely. Criticize ideas, like, like, not people. That's right. I agree with that. Um, I I try not to um to uh, report anyone, but I know there there are times where I where where I really should. But there's been and and some of the community that I'm in, like if you report anyone, then there'll just be a report war. <laughs> like everyone yeah. gets banned, and it's just a whole bunch of bullshit. But. Yeah. Um, so like if everybody does it combined. Nobody knows who reported who. Yes. Yeah. So that helps. So I, I just think for the sake of other people's mental sanity, people will one shouldn't be attacking other people, and two 
you kind of need to face the repercussions of being so vile, like, yes. you know, like hateful towards people. I'm, I'm okay with you expressing your anger and, you know, distaste of an ideology, but, you know, call it, it it's not free speech when you start attacking people. It's hate. No, no it's not. But yeah, this has There's been so lovely. I am so sleepy and I'm going to go back to bed. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Um, work. It's, uh, <laughs> well, um, I, um, I agree. This has really been awesome. I, I hope you can come back sometime soon because uh, there's so many more questions that I have for you and you're so pleasant to talk to. Thank um, you. Chat, thank you for coming. Thank you for watching so long. We've, um, we had at most 18 or 19 viewers. And now um, for the last half an hour or so, or 45 minutes, it's been bouncing between um, 13 and 17 viewers. So we-, we That's so pretty good. Yeah. When, I, when I had my first video, I had two viewers. <laughs> and, and, and then it, it, go, it went up to 25, but oh, nice. you know. Yeah, but that was like my ask me anything and it was 45 minutes and I tried to get so concise, and, but, but still like- That's super cool though. I felt validated. Okay? Yeah, two yeah, viewers that's nice. validated me. <laughs> well, thank you, chat, for coming. I hope you all have a wonderful night. Uh, Zara, stick with me for a few minutes after I end the podcast. Okay. And um, everyone, have a wonderful night. Um, just so you know, on Thursday morning, um, Eastern Time, um, <laughs> I say it all funny, 9.30 Eastern Time, AM, um, I have another atheist flashback. Um, and it's not me. Goddess of Edge, right? Not you. And mm -hmm. then we have a fundraiser stream 12 hours after that one starts at 9.30 for Christy Santiago. Um, she, needs new, uh, she needs new equipment um, for everything she does. She researches like no one else I know. And um, she's very oh, involved. Perfect. In, perfect. That's awesome. Yeah. And she's that's my co-host for the Leah podcast. So uh, oh, we, nice. we, we really need the person who does all the fact checking in the world for, for us. Um, to have decent equipment that's not um, just breaking down all the time for. Yeah. So hopefully that's I awesome. see everyone there. It's, um, it's better than raising funds for a mosque or for scholars that um, spread hate. Don't spread hate. I agree. A hundred percent. Absolutely. So again, everyone have a wonderful night. Thank you for coming. And we will see you next time. Bye, guys.